Obesities of Adolf Hitler's Life and His Lasting Impact on the World. Adolf Hitler was born on April 2, 1889, in a small village in Upper Austria on the border with the Federal Republic of Germany, called Braunau im Inn, abbreviated as Braunau. Hitler was the fourth of six children, born to a father who worked as a customs official, Alois Hitler, and a mother from a poor rural family, Clara Hitler, who was his father's third wife. The family of Hitler lived a comfortable financial life, but Alois was an authoritarian personality, and little Adolf often found himself on the wrong side of his father's quick temper. In 1898, Hitler moved with his family to Linz, the capital of Upper Austria. He spent most of his childhood there, and it remained his favorite city throughout his life. He expressed his wish to be buried there. Hitler attended elementary school in Linz, excelling as a popular student. However, his academic performance declined in high school due to psychological reasons, which infuriated his father, who wanted his son to become a civil servant like him. Hitler left school at the age of 16 without obtaining a diploma. After his father's retirement from the government customs service, Hitler often argued with him because he wanted to be a visual artist, while his father wanted him to enter the Habsburg civil service. In his childhood, Hitler feared and despised his father because he was violent towards him and his mother, often subjecting them to harsh treatment. In contrast, Hitler was a loyal son to his mother. His father, Alois Hitler, died in 1903, but he left a pension and sufficient savings to support his wife and children. His mother passed away two years after her husband's death in 1907, following her battle with breast cancer at the age of 47. After dropping out of high school at the age of 16, Hitler spent his later years focused on drawing and visiting museums. In 1905, he traveled to Vienna for the first time in an attempt to pursue his artistic dream, attend the opera, and study the music of Richard Wagner, whom he greatly admired. However, instead of music, it was civil architecture that captivated Hitler. He became deeply interested in architectural drawings and even drew entire buildings after seeing them once. His talent as an artist, which his teachers noticed from childhood, became evident in Vienna. From that point on, Hitler aspired to become a distinguished painter. In 1907, Hitler applied to the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna with confidence in being accepted. However, the result came as a shock, he was rejected. The Academy later clarified that they saw in him a talented architect and that his submitted paintings highlighted his architectural talent, not his skills as a painter. Despite the seemingly convincing response from the Academy, Hitler did not pursue architecture as recommended. Rejected by the Academy of Fine Arts and having failed to study Wagnerian music, Hitler ended up living in a homeless shelter, hungry and impoverished. He continued in this state for three years, surviving on restaurant leftovers and begging for his daily bread. Hunger, hunger was a faithful guardian. Hitler did not desire ordinary government jobs, and he said of himself, despite my youth, I thought about the future, and no profession or trade ever appealed to me. I never felt the slightest urge to tread in my father's footsteps, for the job seemed to me like a rope that always pulls one downward. He influenced Hitler's thoughts. Hitler despised the multi-ethnic composition of the ruling Habsburg Empire in Austria. Hitler was an ethnic German speaker in Austria and, during his stay in Vienna, resented non-Germans because he considered himself German. He ridiculed the Austrian government, which recognized eight official languages and believed that no government could stay in power if it treated all ethnic groups equally. In February 1914, he was examined for the Austrian military service but was deemed unfit due to his frailty and physical weakness. He then left for Munich in 1913. Hitler was keen to prove his allegiance to Germany. 
In August 1914, the world plunged into a war like no other, World War I, which entirely changed Hitler's life. When the war broke out, he requested permission from King Louis III of Bavaria to serve and was accepted. Hitler quickly joined the military, finally finding a purpose in the army to define his identity. After about eight weeks of training, in October 1914, Hitler was assigned to the Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment 16, which fought in Belgium and France. Hitler, a soldier who carried his paintings with him wherever he went, spent his downtime drawing. Up to that point, remnants of the art-loving musician still held sway over him as he drew landscapes, but with deliberate contempt for the depiction of people and their proportions. Hitler took on one of the most perilous roles in the war, working as a messenger between armies on the Western Front. He participated in several major battles, including in October 1916, during the Battle of the Somme, Hitler was wounded in the leg, one of the bloodiest battles of the war. He was easily recognizable with his distinctive mustache, later known as the J Toothbrush Mustache, during his recovery period in Germany. He was wounded for the second time following a British gas attack, temporarily blinding him, near Ypres in Belgium. He was transferred to the military hospital in Paiswalk, Germany, in October 1918. While recovering in the German town of Paiswalk, the unthinkable happened, Germany surrendered. Hitler was allowed to leave the hospital in November 1918 after the end of the war. He remained in the army and later returned to Munich. In recognition of his bravery during the war, Hitler was awarded the Iron Cross Second Class in 1916 and the Iron Cross First Class in 1918. In the period before the surrender, the High Command in Germany sought to shift the responsibility for the impending retreat to quell growing internal unrest and the possibility of defeat on the front lines. The major parties in the Reichstag, the German parliament, received a poisoned legacy. Despite being granted more powers, they found themselves entangled in the imminent defeat. Emperor Wilhelm II abdicated just days before the armistice was signed. Like others, Hitler felt anger, viewing this as a betrayal by socialists within his country to an undefeated German army on the battlefield. He decided to enter the world of politics, marking the beginning of his political journey. Because war spoils only go to the victors, when the Treaty of Versailles was signed in the summer of 1919, Germany was forced to bear sole responsibility for all the war's events. Germany was obliged to pay huge reparations and, under the treaty, lost a vast amount of its territories, which was a devastating blow. Hitler was deeply dismayed, as this defeat and humiliation of his country through the Treaty of Versailles challenged his sense of self-worth and values. It contributed significantly to the formation of his ideology and worldview. In 1919, Hitler joined the media office of the Bavarian Military Administration. This office gathered intelligence on civilian political parties and provided soldiers with political education against During communism. During the discussion, a professor spoke In about In August 1919, views. Hitler delivered his first anti-Semitic speech as one of the instructors in these educational the courses. A month later, he wrote in newspapers for the first time about his racial ideology, calling for the removal of Jews from Germany. He was appointed as a spy, tasked with infiltrating an emerging far-right extremist group called the German Workers' Party, which was later renamed the Nazi Party. While investigating the party, Hitler was influenced by the anti ideas of the party's founder, Anton Drexler, and he joined its ranks, eventually transforming from a painter into a Nazi leader. 
Hitler joined the Nazi party in October 1919 and played a role in shaping the party's political program in 1920. The pro By 1921, Hitler's oratory skills helped him rapidly rise within his new party. He spoke in front of approximately 6,000 people in Munich in February, and he was actively involved in promoting the gathering by sending party supporters in trucks, carrying the symbol, distributing propaganda leaflets in the area. However, the party's executives, including one of its founders, Anton Drexler, were concerned about Hitler's growing popularity. In an attempt to undermine his position, they formed an alliance with a socialist group while Hitler was visiting other nationalist parties in Berlin. This move had the opposite effect, as Hitler immediately resigned and only rejoined when he assumed absolute control of the party. He became the leader of the party, carrying the title of Führer leader. The Nazi party's membership grew significantly in two years, reaching 55,000, with the support of 4,000 men from the party's paramilitary wing, the Sturmabteilung, SA. Germany's government was on the verge of collapse, and hyperinflation had caused the price of a loaf of bread to rise from 250 marks to 200 billion marks by November. Hitler and Nazi party officials refused to participate in the Weimar elections, seeking instead to overthrow the government in Bavaria, a state in the Weimar Republic. Hitler sought to start a revolution when he and his forces, known as the Stormtroopers, Sturmabteilung, which consisted of various right-wing paramilitary units, stormed a meeting between the Bavarian Prime Minister Gustav von Kahr and business leaders at the Bergerbrauchler in Munich on November 8, 1923. Under threat of force, Kahr pledged his support. The following day, Hitler led a gathering of 3,000 men into the streets, but the police were waiting for them. Sixteen Nazis and three police officers died in the violent clashes that ensued between the police and the crowds. Hitler was arrested and sentenced to five years in prison on charges of treason after the failed coup attempt. He spent only nine months of his sentence in Landsberg prison, during which he used the time to finish the first volume of his book, Mein Kampf, My Struggle, in which he summarized his autobiography and laid out the principles of the Nazi movement. In the book, he clearly articulated his goal of creating a racially and socially Darwinian nationalist dictatorship views, and his vision of reclaiming living space, Lebensraum, in the East through military expansion and the removal of indigenous and less valuable populations. After his release from prison, Hitler was initially banned from giving speeches, first in Bavaria, the wealthiest of Germany's 16 states, and later in several other German states. This ban continued until 1928. Hitler reorganized and unified the Nazi party, changing his political strategy to include electoral politics and programs targeting new and disaffected voters. He also aimed to bridge traditional conflicts within German society, using modern campaigning techniques to reflect the hopes and fears of potential voters. The Nazis conducted a campaign to appeal to various social and economic groups by using persuasive tactics to win over the disillusioned voters. Renewing National Defense Capabilities Restoring National Sovereignty Eliminating Communism Abolishing the Treaty of Versailles Overthrowing foreign, political, cultural, in Germany and rectifying moral corruption, achieving economic prosperity and providing job opportunities. Afterward, Hitler's popularity began to rise as his party achieved significant results in the 1928 Reichstag elections, and the number of party members increased again due to continuous propaganda and the exploitation of the global economic crisis. 
Hitler's personality stood out and drew the attention of the masses. World War I, a plan Hitler opposed. Financial support from industrialists solidified the Nazi party's financial base and allowed Hitler to effectively appeal to the middle class, the working class, and the unemployed. The Nazis used modern technology and cutting-edge political marketing research to achieve their electoral success and created an atmosphere of fear through the violence they sanctioned. The youthful energy of the party, coupled with its avoidance of associations with democratic governments, enabled them to break through electoral barriers. In the September 1930 elections, they received nearly one-fifth of the popular vote, and in the national elections in September 1930, Hitler's party received more than 18% of the vote, compared to 2.6% in 1928. Hitler was a charismatic and compelling speaker, which drew the attention of a broad spectrum of disillusioned Germans looking for change. The Nazi movement continued to gain momentum between 1931 and 1932, creating a strong public sentiment that Hitler would come to power and save the country from political paralysis, economic stagnation, cultural chaos, and communism. When he ran for the presidency in the spring of 1932, Hitler and the Nazis received 37.3% of the votes in the July 1932 elections, making them the largest political party in Germany. By that time, the Nazi party had approximately 450,000 members, more than 400,000 in military units, and over 50,000 in the paramilitary units by 1932. On January 13, 1933, President Hindenburg appointed him as Chancellor of Germany, and as soon as he came to power, Hitler established an absolute dictatorship. He began to eliminate Nazi opponents, banned opposition to the national and nationalist goals of the Nazi party in the press, and prohibited all labor unions and opposing political parties. When the elections were held on March 5, 1933, the Nazis received 43.9% of the votes. Two days later, the Enabling Act was passed, granting Hitler complete authority. The Nazis their undesirables from public life starting in 1933. Hitler withdrew from the Disarmament Conference and the League of Nations in October 1933, while signing a non-aggression treaty with Poland in January 1934. The major shift came in August 1934 when German President Hindenburg passed away, and the military leaders agreed to merge the chancellorship and the presidency into one position, transferring supreme leadership of the armed forces to the Reich, the official name for Germany. Officers and soldiers personally pledged loyalty to Hitler. Hitler ruled all of Germany and bestowed upon himself the title of leader of Germany and its chancellor. This marked the beginning of a new era. His era is known as Hitler's beliefs include as part of a natural sciences, literature, industries, and inventions, and he warned against compromising the purity of this race to prevent it from losing its distinctive characteristics. Law to protect German blood and honor, and the law for the protection of German blood and German honor. In a special session Parliament at the time, legislation was passed that deprived the official name for Germany in the period from 1871 to 1945. Jews were prohibited from marrying or having sexual relations with those known as German racialists. Any public display was banned. During the annual Nazi party rally in Nuremberg, Hitler announced a series of new racial laws that denied with German citizens or persons of related German Hitler had a deep animosity the fact that the first girl he fell in love with in his life was Jewish. However, he did not reveal his love to her because he didn't have the courage to do so. In addition to isolating anyone who had three regardless of their religious identity, 
Hitler described these laws as an attempt to execute le- concerning the problem, which, if it erupts again, would then have to be resolved by the Party of National Socialism according to the law. From Hitler's perspective, the biggest enemy of Nazi due to its insistence on internationalism and economic conflict. Hitler believed that the ultimate saw as the embodiment of evil. In November 1937, in a secret meeting with his military leaders, Hitler outlined his plans for future invasions starting with Austria and Czechoslovakia. In January 1938, Hitler announced that he was dispensing with the services of expressing his unwavering gratitude to Benito Mussolini, the leader of Italy, the fascist. As Hitler moved forward with implementing his vision domestically, he turned his attention to events beyond Germany's borders. Regional expansion was the next item on his agenda. Before completing his third year in power, Hitler launched his foreign campaigns. He led the Nazi forces to victory in the invasion of Austria in March, achieving his goal of annexing the country where he was born and ruled. His next objective was to annex the Sudetenland region of Czechoslovakia. Hitler pressured for the implementation of his demands, convinced that both British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain and his French counterpart, Édouard Daladier, did not want war. Indeed, Hitler's demands were met at the Munich conference organized by Chamberlain. Nazi forces advanced towards Czechoslovakia and seized the Sudetenland. After Munich, Hitler began to cast his gaze eastward towards Poland, encouraged by his success in Munich. Initially, he needed to strike a deal with the Soviet Union, led by Joseph Stalin. Hitler was willing to put aside his hatred of communism for strategic gains, and the two powers signed the Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact in late August. Hitler's goal was to lay the groundwork for a new order in Europe, 1933-1939, from Greater Germany. In 1941, this policy shifted from expulsion to extermination. Hitler believed that his path was clear, and he began the invasion of Poland on September 1. This decision was a gamble as the German army was not yet at its full strength, but Hitler was confident that Britain and France would not provide more assistance to Poland than they did for Austria or Czechoslovakia. However, he was mistaken, as his invasion of Poland in 1939 led to the Allies declaring war on him on September 3, despite Hitler's gambling on the non-intervention of Britain and France. Despite the initial loss, he was winning the war as Poland fell rapidly. During the war, his forces swiftly conquered large parts of Europe, destroying the blitzkrieg tactics they employed, based on the element of surprise and rapid offensive operations, overwhelming everything in their path. When France surrendered on June 17, Hitler sought revenge for the German defeat that occurred more than two decades earlier. Hitler insisted that the French surrender agreement be held in the same railway car in Campine, where Germany was forced to sign the armistice at the end of World War I. There is a memorial at the site with the inscription, here on November 11, 1918, succumbed the criminal pride of the German Empire. Now Hitler stood victorious in the very place that witnessed Germany's greatest humiliation. Despite the Nazi-Soviet treaty, Hitler did not relinquish his strong hatred for communism, and his ultimate goal was always to extend regional expansion to the East. He was highly skeptical of Stalin and initially planned to subdue Western Europe before turning to the Soviet Union. When the Soviet forces occupied the Baltic states, he decided to begin the invasion and was convinced that the Red Army could be defeated within months, but he was wrong. This mistake was further compounded by declaring war on another formidable foe, the United States. Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Union led to the conquest of vast territories, resulting in the deaths of nearly 3 million Russians. When the German invasion of the Soviet Union failed, Hitler took over daily military operations himself, 
convinced that he could succeed alone. At that time, he was directing the entire army from his headquarters, thousands of miles away. He was convinced that the Soviets would be defeated if the Nazi army executed his plan exactly in the spring of 1942. However, his belief was proven wrong in the Battle of Stalingrad, where German forces failed to capture the city as it was besieged by the Soviet forces and the siege continued for several months. During this time, the German forces suffered from hunger, cold, numerical superiority of the Soviets, and continued siege. Hitler ordered his forces to stand their ground and not surrender, but the army's field commanders chose to ignore this, leading to Hitler facing continuous criticism as being personally responsible for the defeat. Hitler's stubbornness led to the retreat of German forces in the East, and his skepticism and refusal to negotiate came at a high cost for Germany in the West. When the Allies landed on French soil on Tuesday, June 6, 1944, known as a D-Day, Hitler was sleeping in his private resort. The military leaders could not make important decisions without his permission, and they couldn't move crucial tank units, which might have delayed the Allied invasion, until he woke up. The Allied landing operations were successful. Germany was now fighting and losing a war on two fronts. Nevertheless, Hitler received this news with great enthusiasm, believing that his forces could ultimately defeat the United States and Britain in the war. This defeat was a major turning point in the war, and the German forces were subsequently defeated in the Battle of El Alamein in Egypt in the second half of 1942 against the Allies. The German army suffered setbacks and retreated to Germany. Mussolini was arrested in July 1943 and executed in April 1945. The man faced increasing opposition from the elite within the German military as Germany's military situation worsened. Many leaders who had been loyal to him in the past now sought to kill him. He was increasingly afflicted by megalomania and paranoia, often making last-minute changes to his agenda. Several assassination attempts on Hitler were planned in 1943 to 1944. Finally, an opportunity arose on July 20 to get rid of him. He was meeting with top military aides at his field headquarters during World War II, known as the Wolf's Lair. A high-ranking military officer named Klaus von Stauffenberg left a bomb in a small briefcase in the meeting room. The bomb exploded at precisely 12.42 p.m., resulting in the death of a secretary and three officers. However, Hitler was fortunate to escape with minor injuries as he shielded himself from the full force of the blast by a table made of oak. Most of those involved in the assassination attempt were executed. In 1945, the Allied forces successfully invaded Germany from all sides, leading to the fall of Berlin. Despite his politically controversial history as a Nazi dictator responsible for the deaths of thousands, Hitler continued to consider himself a painter until the end of his life. He even created some watercolor paintings while in power. Between July and November 1937, the Nazi party organized an art exhibition in Germany known as the Degenerate Art Exhibition. It primarily served a political purpose, and the exhibition showcased 112 artists, with only six of them being Jewish. Over a million people visited the exhibition in the first six weeks after its opening. The main goal of the exhibition was political. Hitler, who deemed modern art movements like Cubism or value, blamed the Jews and Bolsheviks and believed it was their duty to eradicate these art movements. The pure art was the Nazi art that expressed the concept of a during that time, Hitler's obsession with Aryan purity was evident, and he used art as a political tool, completely disregarding adolescent dreams of music and painting. Participation in the Degenerate Art Exhibition required artists to adhere to classical painting standards, avoid any criticism of Nazism or Germany in their works, and exclude any elements of modern art movements, which had their roots in the early 20th century. Hitler's atrocities extended beyond the victims of war. 
He established internment camps for political prisoners and regime opponents and carried out mass extermination. When the Soviet forces surrounded Hitler's bunker in Berlin, the Nazi leader accepted the inevitability of his defeat and began to implement his plan to end his life. Hitler married his longtime companion, Eva Braun, who remained by his side for 11 years. Early in the morning of April 29, he dictated his political will and appointed Admiral Karl Donitz as the head of the state and Joseph Goebbels as a counselor. On the following day, shortly after 3.30 p.m., the couple committed Hitler then shot himself in the head, and their bodies were burned, according to most accounts. Thus, the life of the man who single-handedly led the 